I was asking one of the guys yesterday, and I think I can, like, spill the beans on the whole operation in, like, November or something like that, you know, when they, when it becomes public what's, you know, what the new stuff is. Then it won't be a secret, you know, I don't have to keep it under my hat or anything. Okay, but I have to go, because in a little bit I'm going to be meeting the factory engineer guys again to work out some details, a lot of details, kind of. We have a lot of stuff to figure out. It's cool. Oh yeah, one of those other little details I should keep in mind is that if you can fit a pencil in something and have it squished, that's like a little kid's finger. That's no good. You, can't, you have to make it so you can't get a pencil in any spot that squishes. So if there's a, like a little tiny thing, that's okay. But if you can get a pencil in there and it can get stuck... No. Oh, and there's a drop test where they drop products from a certain height. It's like a few feet. And it has to be able to survive the drop test without breaking. Had a meeting with the toy safety guys today. Holy regulations, Batman! No wonder there's not so many cool toys. Those safety regulations kick the crap out of them. I think we're good, though. I also gave the guys some detailed drawings for an updated design for one of the things that would make assembly super simple. It might be a little bit complicated to mold the pieces. But if they can mold the pieces, it'll be like one person could put the thing together in like 30 seconds. Sorry if I run out of battery. I'm almost out. I should have plugged my thing in while I was at the office. Didn't think about it. Anyway, I'm on my way out of Hong Kong, back on the train to the airport. And yesterday it was kind of an interesting experience having a whole bunch of like suits sitting around a conference table talking about my inventions. <laughs> I was sitting on the table. Anyway, I know they must be pretty serious if they got that many suits in there. <laughs> and now, the sitting around marathon. Perhaps I shall call it the charathon. Oh. It's like 20 hours of sitting on my butt. Why can't the airplanes just have bunk beds? Oh, we could totally fit more people that way. And it would be so nice. Even if just half the seats were the bunk beds. And then the people who really want to sit down, which is probably no one, can sit in the chairs. Oh, check it out. I got a nice present from one of the guys in the office. I said I wanted to get some chopsticks while I was here. So I got this. Stainless steel ones. I really like stainless steel. Sweet. Last Hong Kong snack. Upon arrival at the airport back in New York, I was immediately overwhelmed by the fact that most of the people were enormous and very rude. And then I remembered, oh yeah, that's what it's like here. And then I wondered, I wonder if I would want to live so far from other people if I was in a country where people weren't so rude all the time. I don't know. I'd still definitely want space around me and trees and stuff. But I might not want to live like, like as separated as I do now. Here's an example of this rudeness to which I refer. I did this in China and then in the U.S., one right after the other with an airplane in between. So it was, you know, I got the contrast right off. Now, when I was in China, I went up to an airport worker who didn't speak English, and I was looking for the airport train, right? Uh, and so I go up to him, and I, I don't remember what the name for the airport train there was, but whatever. Say, I'm just going to call it airport train. So I'm like, airport train? And the guy's like, you know, gave me pointy directions, very clear. I was like, oh, thanks, great. So I go to the airport train right there. So, I land at JFK, get off the airplane, walk around the maze of airport, whatever, and you know, I ask some guy, hey, you know, a guy who works at the airport, obviously knows where everything is. Hey, where's the airport train? That's what he does. And I'm like, what? 
this over there, I don't know, just follow the signs. Uh, and I'm like, oh wow, thanks, that was really helpful. <clears throat> so I can go up to a person who, who does not speak the same language as me in another country and get perfect directions. And I come here, guy speaks, speaks well, I shouldn't say perfect English, guy can speak crappy English, but can't, can't give me a simple answer. So that's, that's one example. Here's the other example. Walking down the sidewalk. <clears throat> in Hong Kong, lots of people walk around the sidewalk. And in New York, people walk around on the sidewalk a lot. So, in Hong Kong, you're walking towards someone, and, you know, it's clear that, obviously, if you both keep walking straight, you'll run into each other. So, as soon as people realize that, one person is like, oh, I'll nudge over this way. And then the other person is like, oh, I'll nudge over this way too. And then, shoo, no problem, right? Get to the U.S., people are like, ah! Uh, it's like they just got dropped on the planet Earth from another planet. They don't know what. Uh, how do I get around this person? Ah, ah, ah! Get, get, get away! Ah! And that—that's that—that's an example of rudeness, but also like laziness. Like it's obviously what's gonna happen. And if your brain is turned on, you, you'd see it coming ahead and be like, "Oh, let me just step aside." But no, no, it has to be like, "Well, I'm not gonna step aside first. I'm gonna make him step aside. And even if he does step aside." I'm going to step aside to be in his way again to, to, to assert my dominance. Eh, stupid things like that. Like, God, can't we just, like, why, why, do we, why do we have to create a conflict with just, like, walking past strangers in, in the airport? Why, why does everything have to be a problem? Can't we just, like, get past that and, like, yeah, all right, that's it. Is there any chance people in this country could be less rude? That would be really cool, I'm just saying.